for a lot of folks, having a cure for HIV would bring a kind of freedom. Freedom from pill popping, freedom from HIV stigma, freedom from discrimination and criminalization. So what is a cure then? If some of those advantages depend on what kind of cure you have, we, we kind of need to parse that out. There's eradication and there's post-treatment control. Eradication, I think, is pretty straightforward. You've gotten rid of the virus from the person's body. But post-treatment control is a little bit more complex. It means that the virus is still in the body of the person, but there's some kind of mechanism, almost certainly the immune system, that's keeping the virus under control. But you still have HIV. It's just that you don't need to take antiretroviral therapy to control it. You have your immune system controlling it. Let's imagine you did one of those things and you're sitting there thinking, all right, well, now I cured HIV. Prove it. That's really hard, really hard. So what you're hypothesizing to yourself is either you got rid of somebody's, all of this HIV in somebody's body or that you've induced some mechanism that the virus will be under control and you don't need antiretroviral therapy. The only way that you can test that either of those things as it happens, is to remove antiretroviral therapy. And when we do that, we, under very controlled and closely monitored conditions, we call that an analytic treatment interruption. Here's what we're going to do. It's five stages. Bring people in, HIV infected, on therapy. Make sure people know what they're getting into because it's not straightforward. Probably the most important part of this process will be the informed consent. And the first thing we're going to do is a shot in the arm of a vaccine. This vaccine will turn on the immune system so that the T cells that are in the body will then go and attack vulnerable parts of the virus. Not the whole virus, just the Achilles heel, just the vulnerable parts, okay? So that's step one. Um, with one vaccine, you don't really get much. You have to do it a couple times. Um, and so that's the boost, right? You do the prime first vaccine is the prime. You sort of get the immune system aware of what it needs to do. Then you come in a second time, and then you boost those numbers. Then you come in, and we do this with uh, fragments of DNA. All right? And so that's step two, another couple shots in the arm. And then step three is you come in with yet another boost. This time it's with a, uh, a modified uh, virus, like a flu-like virus, that really turns on the immune system. So that's the third stage. This takes about six months to get through this. It involves a couple of DNA vaccines and then this, this, this MVA boost. All right, now you have, in theory, uh, an immune system in which the T cells have been trained to go after the vulnerable parts of the virus. That would probably cure some monkeys, but that's not going to cure people. So then we go to the next step. And this is the, probably the, um, where all the excitement's going to be, but also where all the work is. So over a period of 10 weeks, we're going to um, give people first an injection of HIV antibodies, which are, which are very safe. These are, these are antibodies that float around the body, and they sort of latch on the HIV. These antibodies, when they latch on the HIV, can turn on the immune system's ability to just clean things up. And we're going to give a vaccine adjuvant a so-called TLR9 agonist. Okay, this is also a shot in the arm, 10 weeks. And what that, what that will do is it will force the virus out of its hiding place um, and also turn on the immune system so that you're going to get this 10-week period where we're going to see virus coming out and we're going to be cleaning things up and get the reservoir down. I really do like, for example, with Steve's trial that you know, he mentioned is that there is this sort of dialogue to make sure that with the folks who are going to be participating that there is, you know, uh, a, a sort of a combined effort to make sure that everybody is um, part of the team and part of the design. Um, and, and as you know, trying to also recruit more women if we can in some of these trials. So I think it's a really important thing. I think Amphor is making a big effort for that. The real Hard work hasn't even begun yet. That's to understand what our struggles are and to really see us as every single part of you know, the social fabric. And, um, and I think that in order for that to happen, we really need to look at how to create um, something that, that would attract trans women of color to participate. The reality has been, you know, early on, people were literally dying to get access to drugs and the drugs in their bodies. And if you built a research structure, people would come. They would, you know, go, go through 
fire to get, to get there because it was a, literally a matter of life and death. And it was the ones who had the privilege and the education and the access who got there first. And that's still happening today. So it's really incumbent upon us as we look for a cure to kind of reassess that and say, no, we've got to do things a little differently. I've lost five people in my life that have died from AIDS last year who were, I'm 33. They were between the ages of 28 and 35, right? That's huge. I'm the guy who went into the city clinic and started PrEP because I wanted, to f I wanted to fall in love. And I wanted to fall in love without fear. And so I started this whole journey and have been so well treated. So my part is to say there's nothing to fear from clinical research. And the researcher's part is to do what my siblings said and to have this, these types of inclusive conversations. So with no doubt, HIV research has led to important, important advances in other fields of medicine. And I do think it's important that we as uh, people thinking about living with, uh, confronting HIV, uh, have a duty, I think, to tell the rest of the, uh, the world uh, the benefits of what we've done. Drugs developed to treat HIV uh, have been used in the treatment of other infectious disease. I list several HIV drugs uh, that are used in the treatment of hepatitis B virus. And we know that the hepatitis C virus drugs that have been amazingly successful, it's been referred to already today, uh, were uh, really the result of the type of research that was used to develop uh, HIV drugs. The researchers that are involved are caring about human beings and, they're, and that they were so careful with me. They were so careful with me during my treatment interruption. And I, too, am up here to put a face to it to end the shame and say we're in this together, we're working together, and to hopefully provide a little bit of enthusiasm.